in the modern iterations of zombies, storytelling has changed in a big way and we're going to explore whether or not that's a good thing. So I've just spawned in near Breslau, Germany. Power's out. Let's get turned back on. Power's out. Okay, so I have an objective, which is familiar from Shinonuma. All I know right now is that I'm near Breslau, Germany. That's it. That's all I know. However, there is this massive machine in front of me. And so I'm like, okay, well, it's got massive cables running out of it in various directions. And if I walk towards the machine, what happens? Well, number one is I walk over this pad, right? And when I walk over the pad, the power must be activated. So it's indicating that this is related to the power. Number that two- machine belongs in awesome town. I was gonna say, I see this Pack-a-Punch machine. I also get a quote apparently from Dempsey saying the machine is really good. It clearly shows that I can increase my firepower. It's a new machine I haven't seen before. So I've been given an objective, right? This I would describe as just gameplay design. This is not story design. This is not narrative design, etc. Some of those quotes could absolutely have sort of filtered into that bucket had they been maybe a little bit more descript or a little bit more expository maybe. But as it stands right now, story-wise, all I know is I'm near Breslau, Germany. So I'm like, okay, is this a German facility then? Is, is, is that what I'm seeing here? Or is this a group from somewhere else? Like, I have no idea. I notice this, Waffenfabrik der Ries. Okay, well, that's German. So I'm putting some dots together. There's definitely sort of German involvement here. If we jump down here and take a look at this, it's like, okay, well, I don't know what that is. Maybe if you've been paying a lot of attention in Shinonuma to some of those scraps and stuff, starting to get a little bit of a feel for what 935 might be might be involved with but as it stands right now as a new player remember bear in mind that like black ops 1 is not out black ops 2 is not out there is no origins there is no black ops 3 there is no like nero blackstone in shadows of evil <laughs> like all those funky bits and pieces there are millions of them over the years that we've experienced are not present yet we don't know what 935 is or will be we go over here we see this embrace the trinity and true power will be yours what the trinity okay interesting is that is that the trinity of like some kind of some kind of relics like are we talking trinity in sort of mythological terms like assembling the sort of holy grail type situation is that what we're talking about there or could that trinity be something else let's take out some zombies here and continue to try and explore what that trinity could possibly be while you're doing this you look down these corridors you're like hmm okay not really seeing anything particularly interesting on this one, but maybe we'll take a look over here. You sort of take a look and at first you're like, oh, there's just zombies appearing. And then you're like, wait a sec, there's not just a zombie shadow. There's another. Interesting. Why is there the shadow of a teddy bear here? What is the significance? Why could that possibly be there, right? So these questions start forming in your mind. And what I want to make absolutely abundantly clear here is that none of these questions have answers that are spoon fed to you. None of these questions are things that even need answers necessarily. Like, oh, Jesus, I need to be careful. Okay, we've made it back to round two. <laughs> so, oh, Jesus, I forget how deadly World at War is. It really just is an unforgiving game, and I love it for it. It doesn't really matter that I don't have answers to a lot of these questions, right? Do I know what 935 is right now? No. Am I annoyed that I don't know? No. Is the mystery kind of fun? Yeah, it means that I want to explore the world and discover stuff on my own terms. Like, ultimately, that's part of what I really loved. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus, I've got to be so careful about knifing. It's part of what I loved about Verrucht and Shinonuma. The only other two maps where the story even seemed present in any real way, because in Nashor and Toten, it was just like a box that you shot zombies in, and that felt like almost the extent of it. So in those maps, in, in Verrucht and in Shinonuma, I was really enjoying the mystery and now I get to enjoy the mystery more. And as a result of that, I'm gonna start opening doors like this and trying to figure out what's going on, right? It's about the discovery. It's about the thing of going, oh, this sign has a zombie on it as a hazard symbol. So in the same way that you've got a power hazard symbol, you have a zombie one. So that means that this door was probably designed to prevent zombies from breaking through this area, which means that they probably knew that zombies were a thing in this facility. Like, oh my God, I'm good. Mm. Okay, I was trying to say they probably knew that zombies were going to be a thing in this facility. Like they probably had some idea there was going to be some kind of outbreak. Which is interesting because up until that point, up until seeing that sign, I didn't know 
that zombies were on the menu in that kind of way. I thought maybe this was just a weapons research facility. Like, maybe they were doing something with... I don't know. I mean, this could be to do with, like, UFOs or something. Or some kind of super weapon or, like, something like that. But I don't I don't really know, right? Maybe this is where they built that Wonder Waffle thingy. And then I hear a thing like that and I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe this is where they built it. So, yeah. Maybe this is a facility interested in trying to build some kind of super weapon. Like, I start putting things together exclusively from an environment cues, right? Zombies back in the day was designed to be completely and utterly dependent on player exploration and player discovery. Every single aspect of it. Nothing was spoon-fed to you. There was no moment where you could look around and go, oh, if I just press this button here, a big blurb pops up explaining the story to me. No such luck. I can, I can look in all these nooks and crannies and try and find interesting things like this help sign like oh okay so they were kind of overrun and there were some survivors that held out a little bit before they fully got overrun i wonder if i can find anything else related to survivors surviving a, an actual zombie outbreak that would be really interesting spoiler alert you can radios etc but it was this building up from complete first principles of understanding what had happened here and why it had happened right like that was the joy of much of the early story stuff and that's why when i was making my zombie story videos back in like 2009 2010 kind of era the stuff that i was talking about was so off track from where we're at right now with the zombie storyline like it hardly resembles anything that is familiar to us now i mean much of the early story conversation around oh my god there's a zombie there i didn't see it oh that scared the hell out of me that's like the first time i've genuinely like jumped from playing zombies in so long trust world at war to be the game that does that for me much of the early story theorization back in the day was about the vril yar an alien race that was being investigated and was linked to a bunch of the testing that's going on at this site and just sort of thematically has a lot of overlap and alignment with that early zombie story stuff. And the story didn't really end up like pushing really hard in that direction. We had some bits and pieces here and there, but as it stands, the Vril are nowhere near as important as I think they could have been. And yet at the time, people were making their theories about the Vril. And that was fun, dude. It was so fun to be walking through these corridors and being like, oh, I wonder if if they did believe in flying saucer technology and alien technology and therefore what is behind this door like can i get behind that door maybe what if i grenade the door like is there a way that i can can open that door up and see what's behind it maybe there's more research stuff back there like all those sorts of questions were the bread and butter of the early zombies community because no one knew what the hell was going on case in point why is there a hand on the power switch like why is that there is it just for banter is it just for a fun time or is this a specific person's hand? I wonder. Theories abound, obviously. This happens. Bridge goes down. Lovely. I'm hearing something. Okay, so it says something there. Had I been paying more attention, maybe I could have caught what it said to me and I could have picked that up for my story understanding. Guess I'll have to replay the map and do that next time. You know what I mean? So like all of this stuff is building up slowly but surely. Alongside this, in a very, very basic way, I want you to imagine that all of the stuff that you know from the future is not in your head. I want you to ask yourself, does this feel like Call of Duty? Does this man, this young man, this happy chappy running towards me right now, does that feel like Call of Duty? Because transparently, the answer is no. It is simply no. Call of Duty up to this point had just come off the back of its most successful year with Modern Warfare right? Modern Warfare, people running around with R700s. Picture that in your mind and then transport yourself one year later to this, actually like a year and a half later, to this, zombies running at you, these mystery characters we've never heard before yelling oorah and, I mean, I guess that's kind of Call of Duty, but then upgrading weapons in a mysterious funky pack-a-punch machine, you earning points for doing that and buying mysterious perks that give you magical powers. Does that sound like Call of Duty running around modern warfare shooting R700s? No. Does there being like no explanation of the story and also no true historical grounding of the story? Like, obviously, it's based on certain historical events, but the lack of need for it to be 100% the actual truth, right? Does that sound like Call of Duty? No. It doesn't sound like COD at all. And so my position on this, and I think that this is going to be something that I cover in another video, probably pretty soon in a little bit more depth and a slightly less free roam attitude because as it stands right now i'm just sort of freestyling and not necessarily 
cooking in the way that I would like for this particular point. I just want a visual demonstration of the thing that I'm saying. But in not feeling like Call of Duty, it gave space within COD for people who liked COD to like something else a whole lot more. Like, I was a COD fan back in the day. I liked World at War. I liked using actually the Thompson. The Thompson was my favorite SMG in World at War. I much prefer just the MP40. I know the MP40 was all the rage. That's lovely. But I was just a sucker for the Tommy. I can't lie. I just loved it. I felt like the Tommy got unnecessary hate. The PPSH. Oh, baby. Every time I got this when I was younger, I would, I'd be screaming. I'd be so excited, dude. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh my God. World at War. Unforgiving. It's fine. It's not a big deal. We can just continue to enjoy the ambience of the mode while I continue to explain this point. Okay, fine. I'll open up this way. You know, I never used to like opening this way just because I used to love buying the double barrel shotgun. Like once I got better at zombies, obviously when I started, it was like, okay, I've got to go get Jug and I've got to buy my carbine and all that. But as soon as I got to that point where I was like, you know what? I'm a little better at the game now. I would open the other way every single time, buy the double barrel shotty and just have the time of my life. It was so much fun, dude. I love the double barrel shotty. The sound it makes is so good as well. And you're so much more mobile. Like, mm-hmm. Hell yeah, dude. I know I've got insta-kill. I'm not risking it. I'm not risking it. I will not be, I will not be doing that. To continue with the point I was trying to make, I feel like zombies back in the day basically gave space for those people that didn't necessarily obsess over the multiplayer or the campaign in the way that some other folks did, it gave them space to enjoy this really new mode in the Call of Duty sandbox with the Call of Duty budgets, but just not having to do the whole like, okay, it's modern warfare and it's it's all about like serving queen and country and all of that. That stuff's never been really my interest in Call of Duty. Like the people that got into Ooh. Call of Duty for that stuff are the people that previously were into that stuff in Med- No, not Medal of Honor. Yeah, Medal of Honor. Like, the Medal of Honor crowd became the Call of Duty crowd. And Medal of Honor, Call of Duty, like, you can see the, the overlap in naming convention there. Oh, he just said Die Glock? Oh, okay, now I'm like, story-wise, maybe I need to investigate what Die Glock is, right? Like, you start putting pieces together. Anyway, I was never into the whole, oh yeah, I'll uh, obsess over saving my country during the Second World War. Like, that whole thing. It just wasn't particularly interesting to me. Whereas this was like, oh, okay, this is a whole new sort of intellectual challenge, and it's just a really fun game mode in itself. Like, everything is, is possible in Call of Duty Zombies. And the problem that I want to address today... Why am I still using this weapon? The problem I want to address is that, like, zombies used to be a place of counterculture. I feel like zombies used to be essentially a bit of respite from the rest of the Call of Duty attitude. It used to feel like this wasn't COD, like I've described. It used to feel like this was something completely alien, something completely unexpected, almost something uncontrollable as well. Like, we didn't really know anything about the devs back then, and we certainly didn't feel like there was a zombies team. The whole concept of a zombies team is completely something that came later. But it felt like whatever was happening here was like something that jumped out of the box and then could not be forced back in no matter what Activision executives might try and do in the future. It was so special in that regard and it's why it achieved the cult following I think that it did in such a big way because people would talk at school about multiplayer and they'd be like, oh yeah, like I had like a really good game last night or like that was crazy. I, I had this like cool thing happen. But then they'd be like, oh, and by the way, have you seen this this zombies mode that I like, can't even believe is real? Like it was no longer just like, oh yeah, I'm just like enjoying multiplayer. It's, I don't think that this is like, I, I, I'm no longer believing my own eyes. Do you know what I mean? It was that level of incredulity. Like people, oh God, oh God. That was always a little wobbly, wobbly area back in the day, that little bit. So it felt like Call of Duty counterculture and it was joyous. It was truly joyous. And this was then leaned into by Treyarch as well, where the devs built out the team. The devs essentially realized that just as zombies could be Call of Duty counterculture, so in some senses could Treyarch's own campaign storyline. And that's what we ended up seeing with Black Ops 1, where we obviously have this massive crazy story with Reznov, and everyone's like, Jesus Christ, like, why the hell have you gone down this whole trippy like mind-bending route but it makes total sense because the zombies mode which was this whole trippy mind-bending route was a cult classic hit and at the time as well Treyarch was like the the unpopular studio like World at War was not the popular game like Modern Warfare was the popular game and so 
Treyarch were coming at this from the perspective of, can this earn us a bit of, like, kudos with the overall wider community? Like, can this convince them that we are actually cool and we do have these really cool ideas? And then, what do you know? Zombies did exactly that. And so, of course, Treyarch were like, let's lean into that further, right? So that was the Treyarch DNA in a really big way. The counterculture, the escape from much of the stuff that we're used to, from Activision especially, and even just from Treyarch itself or from the, the individual Call of Duty studios generally, it was, it was new. Sorry, zombie, just give me a second. I'll keep explaining my little thesis in a moment, but I've just got to do another task first. Is that all right? Yeah, that's okay. Okay, good. Thank you. I appreciate your patience. I would like a nuke. Thank you. Sometimes all you got to do is ask, you know? I'm going to try and earn the points that I need for pack now, and then I'm going to pack the double bar shotgun because I'm just that kind of guy. That's a nuke. Okay, that's very good news. That is very, very good news. But, oh God, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I want to farm some points first. So we're going to just try and get one more farm in before I go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Pack a punch. Quickly, 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 quickly. Oh, it was always scary. This brings me forward in the storyline to, let's say, Black Ops 3 or something, right? You get to Black Ops 3, Treyarch's in a position where they're like, God damn, we have for so long made zombies this like expanding universe and we're now in a point where the truly elaborate nature of the story has actually come back to bite us a little bit like it's kind of ended up a bad thing because we've got so much going on that even we can't keep track of and it's just making our lives a misery like to be frank there was too much weirdness in the story too much conflicted with other stuff and it's like the only way to actually kind of make all this stuff make sense together and conjoin it all and make it cohesive is to introduce the idea of a multiverse, right? So we get Black Ops 2 and like Black Ops 2 is very much a product of that that kind of conversation or at least Origins and Mob of the Dead very much a... Oh, oh, not today, Flamethrower. But you know what, actually, today. Just because I can buy the SCG on the wall, bro. I know this thing's also super heavy, so it's actually really, really bad for being mobile. But just sitting in the corner and using the Flamer, like, come on, man, come on. Yes. Yes. Like, come on, dude. My point can wait. I've got a flamethrower, baby. They got to Black Ops 3. The multiverse appeared, right? And things got super crazy. But even so, like, you get into the giant in Black Ops 3 and you have no idea what is going on. And this happens. And we're like, okay, well, it's a new game. It's a new Call of Duty. That's lovely. I still have so many questions. I still don't know what's going on. Like, what did I just witness? Like, sure, it's five years after World of War came out. Sure, the zombies community's learned a lot since then. But you jump into the map, Dempsey, talk to me. Field report. Thank Dimensional you. insertion point was off. We were too late. Ricked off and interrupted established continuity. What happens next is uncertain. Allied operatives MIA. I have no choice but to continue the mission alone. Right. So like I said, it's five years later and yet somehow it's still baffling as to like what is actually going on here. And sure, the devs spoke a little bit pre-launch about why things were were joined up in the way that they were, right? Sure, I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to pretend that that wasn't the case, right? There was a little bit of that. But the folks doing that, the devs doing that were people like Jason Blundell who, as we all know, needs no explaining to make it very clear to you all, Jason Bundle was a cryptic, cryptic guy. And he would straight up refuse to answer questions, or he would straight up give non-answers to things, or whatever he wanted to do in the moment, really, just to try and stir the pot and keep Zombies players feeling like they didn't know what was going on and they were looking around at this space going, okay, like, yeah, it's familiar. Yeah, I've been here before. Yeah, I'm no longer asking, like, is this the Doris facility? Is this something that I should be paying a lot of attention to? What does the sign on the wall say? Like, sure, like a lot of those questions weren't new, but there were certainly new things here. Like, what the hell is the deal with this being here, for example? That wasn't there before. Why is that there now? So we didn't know what was going on and it was glorious. And so even in a game like Black Ops 3 in 2015, Treyarch were happy sitting in that space of being the studio that everyone kind of looked at and went, what the hell are they smoking? And if we fast forward all the way to the present day, we now get to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3's Zombies gameplay reveal, which happened during COD Next. Now, before I really start launching into what I want to say here, I 
unfortunately need to give a couple of disclaimers because like I said in my video talking about the overall problem with Modern Warfare 3 Zombies and the impossible challenge that Treyarch faces in trying to craft an experience that suits everybody here, our community is very divided right now and people have very different interests. And as a result of that, I'm going to be speaking to my interests and my kind of needs for the zombies mode here, but other people might not mind as much, might disagree, might have other needs, etc. I just want to make it clear that like, I recognize it's a big tent, okay? Another thing I want to make abundantly clear is that none of what I'm about to say is an attack on any specific dev. I don't think that any one person is at fault for what I just see as certain things that could be optimized to make the storytelling of the zombies mode better. Like I'm going to talk a lot about Miles Leslie here, I'm going to talk about Kevin Drew, but those guys are working their asses off genuinely to make this as good as possible. And I respect the work they're doing, I'm simply trying to call attention to some stuff that I think really could be better if the entire Treyarch and Activision and Sledgehammer marketing team came together to make some tweaks to their formula. The other is that I'm nitpicking just a tiny bit here. I recognize that this isn't going to be make or break for the mode necessarily on launch day, but it is just some stuff that I think could be improved. So jumping in with Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, we've already seen Zakaev, this guy, picking up this Ethereum canister and it's prompted a bunch of questions in us, right? It's made us go, hold on a minute. Why is Zakaev alive, first of all? Why is Weaver at the table dead? The fact that Weaver is dead at the table, does that mean that a long time has passed since the events of Cold War Zombies and therefore he's died from old age? Or has not much time passed since Cold War, but he still died because of some kind of field activity mission related event. One idea that I was throwing out on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, link in the description if you haven't done that already, but I was throwing this idea out that like maybe he's participated in some kind of sort of energy exchange or he's given up some years of his life in order to buy extra years in the dark ether trying to rescue Samantha, like all these sorts of ideas. Like I had a lot of questions, right? Like where are they? Why are they there? Why is Zakaev alive, etc. And as I've stated in the previous parts of this video, questions are a good thing. Like that gives me things to theorize about as we approach launch. It gives me stuff to discover when we actually have the game in our hands. It means that in the classic zombies style, we can start filling in those boxes, but filling them in with supposition, not with concrete hard facts that we get from like a zombies timeline type thing. I think that, that actually takes a lot of the fun out of it, but instead being like, okay, I think I've joined these dots this way. And then six months down the line, there's a twist in the story. And I'm like, oh my God, I had it wrong the whole time. It's actually blah. That's what I wanted. But this is what we got. I'm just going to play the COD next stream for you here. There's a few questions when people saw that cinematic, go and watch it. It's awesome is, hold on a second. Where are we in time and place? Uh yeah, I mean, where are we in time and place is absolutely a question that I'm asking. Two questions, time and place. Like, what's the deal? But I was really happy not knowing the answers to those. Uh, we are between Modern Warfare 19 and MW22, the year 2021. And that's really important to the story because in true Treyarch Zombies fashion, we are always jumping eras, jumping moments. And Right, so you just told us. Okay, that doesn't feel super zombies. I kind of get it, right? Like to play devil's advocate here, there are a lot of modern warfare fans jumping in, probably wondering like, what the hell's going on, right? They don't get it. But when you then follow it up with in true Treyarch fashion, in true Treyarch zombies fashion, we're jumping around timelines, we're jumping around eras, stuff like that. You've got to recognize doing things in Treyarch fashion means not laboriously explaining every single detail about questions that fans might have about what's going on. That is no longer Treyarch fashion. Like, yeah, jumping timelines is Treyarch fashion, but jumping timelines and then explicitly explaining that all is no longer Treyarch fashion. And that's part of why I've been saying in some of my other videos that it feels like the hardcore round based, especially, but also outbreak zombies community aren't really being spoken to by much of this marketing because they'll use these words like for veteran players or in true Treyarch fashion, etc. Like they do it all the time, but then they come out with stuff that doesn't feel like Treyarch to us. Let's keep going and see if this continues through the stream. Really touching different timelines in interesting <laughs> ways. I can't go into all of it. So I can't go into all of it like that is much more the Treyarch that we know and love, right? That's much more of the like, well, it's zombies. So you guys have to figure it out kind of vibe, right? So why not just do that for the previous question? And also why not do that for what we're about to hear as well? But there's a reason for that. Now, the next question which you're hinting to is, why is Zakaev alive? I saw him die, but did you? I saw him die, right? And I'm therefore asking the question, why is he alive? Yes, but I then don't really need to have it explained to me that if I'm seeing his face on my screen, 
and he is alive, that therefore means he didn't die before. I don't need to be sort of babied in that way. I'm not an idiot. I feel like it takes the zombies community for a bunch of idiots if you kind of say, okay, well, the zombies community is probably sitting there going, but he's dead and like can't get their brain past that fact that is like immutable in their minds like obviously if he's alive on my screen i know that i didn't see him die clearly and i've already sort of made peace with that and i'm moving forward to try and figure out why that was the case but this is treating me like i have no media comprehension whatsoever and this next sentence that they're going to go into does the exact same thing did you really? I saw was him get shot. I saw him fall down a missile yeah, well, silo. You... I saw him get shot. I saw him fall down a missile silo. Like, this is almost, in my view, saying for those hardcore players that are listening to this right now, it's like, you are not capable of any more advanced thought than, but I saw him get shot, so he has to be dead, so the devs are wrong. And the devs have to come out and be like, well, actually, let me introduce you to a really crazy concept here. He might have survived. I know, I can tell. It feels so, I don't know, just just, just vanilla and sanitized and, and so overly simplified. This is zombies. We really don't need this stuff explained in this way. And yet, they're gonna keep going. Oh. So him fall there was blood but in true sort of story fashion if there's no body he's not dead now i don't need that explained now, task force 1401 went back to that silo there was water at the bottom it had been drained we're now talking about what task force 141 did in finding him so this is now it's going even further to the point of genuinely i think that this is a bit bizarre why explain a little unknown day in the zombie story canon that if left unexplained still has complete equivalent impact on the rest of the events of the storyline like it doesn't matter whether or not task force one for one went and found blood and nothing else it doesn't materially impact my experience i'm not sitting here going well how did they know that he's not dead it's zombies i'm capable of making a theory and supposing and being like well it's clearly happened somehow so we'll just sort of connect the dots in the way that the evidence presents for us right now and then we'll make it more concrete later when further evidence comes in right but it's this presumption that we're so set in our ways that we can't navigate a, a, a twist in a story and you have to tell us how it works i hate it i just hate it let's keep going lots of blood and Zakaya was gone. Now, officially declared deceased, Ooh. but then whispers emerge that he's still alive. And now, of course, in true sort of villain fashion. And I hate that as well. I hate that he calls him a villain there. It's not me saying I hate it because it's true what he's saying. Like, it's not like I'm sitting here being like, well, I don't want Zakaya to be the villain. I just don't want to know that. I don't want that to be told to me. Reason being, perfect example, let's say you were playing the original zombie story here, right? The ether story. And you were looking at a character like Dr. Edward Rectifan, right? By all accounts, the evidence of the world would suggest that Eddie was actually a villain. He's a Nazi German. He's literally on a conquest for great power. You would describe him as a villain if the ultimate goal for that character was just to make him a villain, to write him off. And as viewers, we would have been like, or fans, we would have been like, okay, he's a villain, fine. He's just the antagonist. But instead, we had this incredible experience where Eddie was able to blossom into the protagonist of the story. He wasn't just written off as a villain, but we had to figure that out as we went. We had the other members of the crew constantly questioning, is Rick Tuffin on our side or is he just a crazy kraut? Like all that sort of stuff. And that was part of the fun. Once again, the supposition, the theory, the uncertainty. But instead here, we're just getting in true villain fashion because he's just a villain. He's just an antagonist. It's boring. He is the ambiguous, vague, vanilla, generic bad guy. And you're just gonna have to deal with that. There's no possibility that he's actually good. There's no possibility that maybe Task Force 1 for 1 are the ones in the wrong here and SSO Green is actually corrupt and working for the Forsaken or whatever. No, we're not doing any of that. We're just gonna say that he's bad because in modern warfare, there's the bad guys who are typically from Russia or from the Middle East. And there's the good guys who are american thumbs up that's modern warfare mate this is zombies we don't talk in those terms around here let's keep going he starts to hear whispers himself as he's recovering from falling down that silo which he did i get it i get it that hurts <laughs> that hurts a little bit <laughs> yep is about this new thing called ethereum 
and he wants to get it. And that really sets the stage. All of that, by the way, is day one getting in the door like you saw in the cinematic, which is that's the start of the story, and players are going to experience this story just in really interesting ways. I don't understand why any of what he just said needed to be said. And I mean the entire segment, the timeline, where they are, why Zakaev is alive, what Zakaev's motives are. I don't feel like any of that is actually relevant. Like, let's put ourselves in the shoes of the most inexperienced Zombies player and then the shoes of the most experienced, the most hardcore of the hardcore, right? We'll do inexperienced first. The inexperienced player going into this probably doesn't give a damn about the story. They probably just don't care. They probably don't know that Zakaev was even in a water tower or whatever the hell in the first place. They certainly don't know anything about Ethereum or what the purple canister is or anything like that. And so they're just sort of coming in being like, okay, uh, there's a guy who's sort of a soldier that's leading a group of soldiers and then he grabs this purple canister Which is clearly like a sort of magical special purple canister and that magical purple canister turns people into zombies And he uses that as part of his escape, right? Like why does the noob need more info than that? They've already picked that up through basic comprehension of that first cinematic trailer. And so that noob is not sitting there going, but exactly which timeline does this take place in? That's my job, okay? That is the job of the hardcore guys. That is your job. And so if we flip over to the hardcore zombies enjoyer, we're not sitting here either going, tell me exactly what year this game takes place in. No! We've had genuinely month-long, even year-long debates in the zombies community about which year certain things took place in. Like, right now, now that we've got the timeline, it's a little different, right? But before the era of just dropping the timeline and clearing up a bunch of those questions, people would debate constantly. Like, for example, in Moon, there was that whole question that whole time of, hold on, Earth doesn't look right. Are we actually looking at Pangaea? And therefore, is the timing of everything completely different to what we expected? Like, have we got the timing completely wrong? That's fascinating. Or a question of where we are. Shangri-La, are we on Mars? Can you imagine if Jimmy Zielinski had jumped on stream before Shang came out and was like, yep, yeah, so actually it's set on Mars, guys. It would have been the worst thing the zombies community has ever experienced. I'm being hyperbolic, but I'm emotional about this. It would have been so bad. And yet he seems intent on taking these questions away, and they're questions that only people who are invested in zombies are going to be asking. Like, I don't feel like any Warzone player gives a damn about why Zakaev might want Ethereum, or like, would be asking the question, like, was Zakaev hearing whispers? And then the Treyarch devs are like, yeah, he was hearing whispers, and they're like, oh no one is doing that. Like, I truly feel like this piece of marketing speaks to zero people. It doesn't sell any copies of the game. It doesn't endear anyone to the idea, the overall vibe of what's happening here. Instead, it's just like, we're just saying words about zombies because we haven't got any other words to say, I guess. It's such a bad look. And like I said, I know that I'm nitpicking here. I know that ultimately the fate of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is not going to rest on the shoulders of this three-minute segment of this COD stream. But I know they can do better. I just know they can do better. The basic of the basic players need to be spoken to, and I understand that. But the Zombies community got big, as I showed you in this video, off the back of the newbiest of the newbie players not having a clue what was going on. We are not five years old. We have media comprehension. We have media literacy. And we don't need to be treated like children in your marketing campaign. It just doesn't sell copies of the game. It's ineffective. And on top of that, the hardcore guys do need to be spoken to, and I don't feel like that's adequately happening right now. And I think that Treyarch, like if any devs are listening to this, whether it's Kevin or someone else on the team, this is your cross to bear, I'm afraid. Like I know that Jason Blundell was very much like the, the, the figurehead of the zombies mode for many years. And I know that the, in the modern day, like being the modern day Jason Blundell is not your job description. But Jason Blundell acted in the way that Jason Blundell did for a reason. Like love or hate the guy. And I'm sure there's a lot of internal politics at Treyarch about positives and negatives of the way that he steered the ship. But he acted that way because it was serving the interests of the zombies community. Or at least he was trying his best to. And some of those interests were 
being fed the cryptic stuff, being spoken to like you were an actual zombies fan, as opposed to being spoken to like a five-year-old and being acknowledged in a way that wasn't sort of like demeaning almost. And when you say, yeah, I mean, we've got stuff for the veteran players like a wall buy, it's like, God, they really think I'm an idiot and it sucks. And I think one simple solution to this, or at least just like a mindset shift that the Treyarch devs and the Activision marketing machine could use going forward here is to really, when you're thinking about zombies, present questions instead of answers. Get us wondering about things that you want us to theorize about. Get us speculating about things that are gonna become important later in the story, but don't just tell us where we're at and tell us the answers. Like, we don't want answers, we want questions. And that's what's been magical about zombies over the years, and it's felt like increasingly in the last couple, that's kind of faded away to a much more clear-cut story. And I think all of us in the zombies community in our varying degrees miss that mystery. Story. So if any change can come from this video I've made here, it's just that I want the zombies team to take the zombies community a bit more seriously in the way they market these things. And that's literally all. That's all I'm asking here. If you agree with this, drop a thumbs up on the video to let me know. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I make long form zombies videos like this all the time. And this is one that you should check out if you haven't already. It's an hour long, not really rant, but deep dive into the state of the zombies community right now and the problems that Treyarch face in Modern Warfare 3. Give it a watch. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.